requirement is your mission. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and today we're going to talk about the requirement development process. And before we really get too far into this, I just want to take a moment and consider that word, requirement. For some reason, people treat the idea of a requirement as if it has some sort of supernatural power to overcome the laws of time and space, not to mention fiscal constraints. It's not exactly a spooky campfire story, but people will certainly be saying to you, oh, but this is a validated requirement. But the reason that understanding what a requirement is, is because the concept of a requirement lies at the heart of almost all bureaucracy. There's this saying that one man's requirement is another man's pipe dream. I know, hurtful. But this captures a simple, undeniable reality about any bureaucratic process where there is a competition for the distribution of resources. There's always going to be two people on opposite sides of the table. The person who has a mission to accomplish and the person who is up against the financial constraint. And the idea of a requirement is less about some immutable truth and more about the way that the person who has a mission and wants more money, the way they articulate their wants and needs. And I always like to think of these two people, the person with the mission and the person up against the financial constraint, as the operator and the analyst. And they are locked in an ancient, never-ending, cyclic battle over resources. For the operator with his mission, more is always better. It's what the economists call insatiability. The operator is going to accomplish his mission by some sort of plan that combines people and supplies and major end items. Of course, all of those items that the operator plans to use, well, each of them has a cost. And if you build the perfect plan that uses all of the resources that guarantee success, well, that plan is going to get pretty expensive. The cost of the plan will get so high that it bumps up against that fiscal constraint that the budget analysts has to maintain. There is just not enough money to buy all of the things that all of the operators want for all of their missions. Economists call this scarcity. That means that somebody has to set priorities. They have to say yes to some things and no to other things. And we'll come back to this later, but it really, really helps if the operator can set these priorities instead of just trying to wish away the budgetary constraint. Setting priorities means accepting risk, articulating risk, and making modifications to the plan to account for that risk. Now, in this little infinity loop, where is the requirement? Well, it is not your costs. Don't come to me saying you have a $10 million requirement. And the requirement is not your plan. Plenty of people lay out one single plan and then try to ram it through as if it's a requirement. Trust me, it is not. Your requirement is your mission. And who gives you your mission? Your higher headquarters. Sometimes your higher, higher headquarters. You don't dream up your mission, usually it's in an official document. And the same thing goes for your requirement. That's why when some division action officer comes to the Pentagon and says, my boss wants, well, he usually gets the hand because it's typically not what the secretary wants. So if you're going to fully articulate a requirement through the PPBE process, you're going to need five elements. You're going to need the guidance, usually some official document that told you to do the mission. You're going to need the drivers. Those are the, the necessary things that you need to execute a plan to successfully achieve the mission. And you need to be able to communicate the milestones and the actions that are necessary to complete that plan. Next, you need cost factors, some per unit cost for those drivers. Then you total it all up. That is the amount of money that your command wants for the mission. And you need to know the documented funding that you're going to receive to do this mission. 
and you don't want any nasty surprises. Now, if you've been to War College, you'll probably notice that this is really close to the ends, ways, and means model. And I understand if it all looks like annoying bureaucratic minutia. But if you want your mission to get the resources that it needs, you have to be able to connect the dots. Here's an example. Those guys teaching the ends, ways, and means model up at the Army War College. Title 10, Section 2154 says that the Secretary of Defense shall implement a senior level service course of at least 10 months. And Section 2151 says that a senior level service course includes the Army War College. To me, that is a great mission to hang a requirement on. Congress told the Secretary of Defense to implement a course of a defined length through the Army. And then you got a good, clean cost driver with the number of students who are going to participate in that course. In the J-Book, they call this student load. And the neat thing about this is when Congress sees it, they understand it. It makes sense to them. And then there's all sorts of details. Postal services and rents and studies. Now, don't let this level of detail panic you. In most cases, there's models to generate all of the information that's shown here. So as crazy as it might seem, that is the key to a requirement. You justify yourself with a mission from higher headquarters and then you're off to the races. That doesn't guarantee you're gonna win because bureaucrats like me have another trick up their sleeve that's gonna show them exactly what your commander really intends to spend taxpayer money on. So if you wanna get an edge by understanding that, watch this video.